The screencast is based upon the material from Module 4, Lesson 29, largely the practice set. Uh, there's nothing too complicated in the homework. And we're going to connect division by a unit fraction to division by one-tenth and one-hundredth, which are also unit fractions. Okay, the first things that you're going to do are going to look like this. So let's read over it and continue. We have 5 divided by 1 hundredth. I uh, only have examples with hundredths, but I'll talk about those with tenths as well. So we have how many hundredths in one whole? Well, we have 100 one hundredths in one whole. And we have five holes there, so we're going to think, well, if one unit has a hundred, five units has five hundred. So the answer is five hundred. And we can put that answer up here as well. Now, I didn't pull any examples with tenths, but I'm, I'm going to kind of uh, draw one up over here. Uh, suppose I have five divided by one tenth. Well, how many tenths are there in one whole? There are ten tenths in one whole. And there would be, okay, if each whole unit has ten, we have five units because we have five holes here. So it would be fifty tenths in one whole. Just so that we have that covered. So uh, 5 divided by 1 tenth is 50. All right, we'll erase that down there and get back to the rest of these problems here. Pretty simple. Let's go on to F. Again, we have 100 hundredths in one hole. And we have 8 holes, so it would be 800 hundredths. So the answer is 800. Now here we have something that's a little bit different. There are how many hundredths in five holes? Well, one hole has a hundred hundredths, five holes has five hundred. And how many hundredths in two tenths? Well, two tenths equals how many hundredths? It would be twenty hundredths if we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by ten. So we have 20 hundredths and 2 tenths. So in 5 and 2 tenths, we have 520 hundredths. Doing the same thing here. If we have 100 hundredths in one hole, 8 holes would have 800 hundredths. And 7 tenths equals 7 tenths. And we can take 7 tenths, multiply it by 10 tenths, and that would give us 70 hundredths. So we have 70 hundredths and 7 tenths. Therefore, we have 870 hundredths and 8 and 7 tenths. All right, let's go on to the next page where we'll just work some of these without all the words here. Okay, let's look at these problems where they don't have all the steps laid out for you. So I have 1 and 7 tenths divided by one tenth. How many one tenths are there in one and seven tenths? Well, I know that my one whole equals ten tenths. And I know that seven tenths equals seven tenths. And that gives me seventeen tenths. We can write this uh, using fractions as well. One and seven tenths divided by one tenth, and that is seventeen. Let's go on to the next one, and we'll rewrite this with fractions thirty one divided by one hundredth. And again, we know that one whole equals one hundred hundredths. Therefore, thirty one holes equals 31 times 100, and we get 3,100. Let's do a couple more examples for you.
here we have 125 divided by 1 tenth. And again, we know that uh, 1 whole equals 10 tenths. So therefore, 125 times 1 whole is the same as 125 times 10 tenths. And our answer is 1,250. So we have 1,000. 250. Now if we look at this, we, we can relate this with our place value chart, can't we? We can see that uh, when we're dividing by one-tenth, we're actually doing what? It looks like we're actually multiplying by one, uh, by ten. So we could go back to the unit fraction lesson. We'll have 125 divided by one-tenth, and we know that since Every unit has 10, and we have 125 units. We can have 125 times 10 equals 1,250. Going on to the next one, uh, we have 3 and 74 hundredths. Okay, let's take a look at that. And we're going to kind of relate it to what we did down here, but I could say that I know that every whole, one whole, equals 100 hundredths. I have three holes, don't I? And I could say 3 times 100, and I have uh, 300 hundredths. And then I can look at my tenths place, and I know that uh, each tenth is 10 hundredths, and I have 7 tenths, so that would be 70, and uh, 4 hundredths is 4, and we have 374. Let's go back to the fractions. 3 and 74 hundredths divided by 1 hundredth. We know that each unit has 100 hundredths, so I'll have 3 and 74 hundredths times 100 and we can relate this right back to the beginning of the year where we had place value charts. And I'll do that right now. We have our hundredths, we have our tenths, our ones, our tens, our hundreds. And when we start with that, we have three and seventy-four hundredths. Multiplying it by one hundred is like ten to the second, or we're going to move it over to each digit moves over two decimal places. So the three goes from the ones to the hundreds, the seven goes to the tenths to the tens, and the hundredths go to the ones place. And we get 374. Moving on to some, got some word problems here. Not particularly difficult. Young bought $4.60 worth of bubble gum. Each piece of gum cost 10 cents. How many pieces of bubble gum did Young buy? Well, we have 400, or excuse me, $4.60. Uh, We're going to find out how many one tenths there are in there, or ten hundredths, divided by 0.10. And that is the same as. 60 divided by, well, we could call it tenths or um, ten tenths or one uh, one tenth or ten hundredths. I'm just going to go with this. It's one tenth of a dollar, and f we have a total of ten tenths in each hole. So I can now change that to my multiplication. And again, 4 and 60 hundredths to, uh, multiply by 10. We're simply going to move everything over in our place value chart, one place to the left, and we get 46. So Young bought 46 pieces of gum. On to another. Okay, Cheryl solved the problem. 48, or 84 divided by 100 equals 8,400. Jane said your answer is wrong. 
because when you divide, the quotient is always smaller than the whole amount you start with. For example, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 100 divided by 4 is 25. Who is correct? Well, of course, we know Cheryl's correct. We have numerous examples uh, that we've already solved today. Now, how can we explain that? Well, one whole has 100 hundredths. So therefore, eighty four divided by one hundredth gives us eight thousand four hundred because there are eighty four times one hundred hundredths or eighty four times one whole gives 8,400. So when we're dividing by a number less than 1, we end up with a quotient that is greater than the dividend. And we could add that explanation as well. When you divide with a divisor less than 1, the quotient is greater than the dividend. One last Okay, last one. The U.S. Mint sells two ounces of American Eagle gold coins to a collector. If each coin weighs one-tenth of an ounce, how many gold coins were sell, sold to the collector? Well, how many tenths are there in two? Very simple. We have two, and we want to know how many tenths are in there, divided by one-tenth. Okay, equals two divided by one-tenth. And once again, we know that each whole, one whole, equals ten-tenths. So two holes equals 20 tenths. So we can change this to multiplication. 2 times 10 equals 20. And I'm not going to write the statement, but we should write out that 20 gold coins were sold to the collector.